coffee, a dark potion that may cause unusually high levels of ambition. Today's ambitious activity, hike the root burn track. The Rootburn Track is located across both Fiordland National Park and Mount Aspiring National Park in the South Island of New Zealand. Covering 33 kilometres, it's a three-day hike that explores sparkling lakes, lush forests, waterfalls and ongoing views of soaring mountain peaks. Leaving Queenstown on the Tracknet bus, we travelled for roughly two hours before we found ourselves here. Back for round two. We are at the Rootburn Shelter, just getting our things ready, about to start. This ain't a volcano, so it's going to be a different hike for me, so it's my second hike. So I'm quite excited to get into the bush and, uh, and experience some nature. It's a beautiful day, so it's going to be fun. See you out there. Day 1, Rootburn Shelter to Rootburn Falls Hut. Distance, 9.8 kilometres. Time, approximately three and a half to four hours. You begin your journey among the moss-covered trees, winding your way alongside the bright blue Rootburn River. You best get used to the sounds of fresh running water. Today is only the beginning. First seeing the canyon-like Bridal Veil vale Falls, followed by Forge Black. Bit of a glacial water hairstyle. Yeah, that's right. It's a uh, nature's hair job. I got waterproof boots on and I'm trying to like step onto a stepping stone. I don't know. So first pack break of the day, we are at a little spot called Forge Black. There's so many people here, which I was quite surprised to see. Nearly every hiker hiking the track today was here, but I suppose that's the great walk to do. But lovely, lovely day so far, and enjoyed our little snack, and we'll see what the rest brings. Forge Flat is originally named after an early blacksmith's camp that was located here in the 1870s, while the old bridle path was being built. The turquoise water is certainly a standout. Man down. Day one, feeling it. But I was, I'm always like this day one. Like out of all two hikes I've done. And I am standing in the water. One thing you'll notice about the root burn track is the diverse number of bird species. My personal favorite, this guy. The South Island Robin, which is only found in New Zealand. If you hold still, you might be lucky to have one come right up to you in search of insects. arrived at this beautiful location which is the Rootburn Flats Hut. It's one of the first huts that you can see on the Rootburn track but we're not staying here. Instead we're staying here, the Rootburn Falls Hut, the second hut along the track 
It's 1,000 meters above sea level, sleeps 48 people. There is soap and flushing toilets. The track between Rootburn Flats Hut and Rootburn Falls Hut starts to reveal those snow-capped mountains. You'll have roughly one hour left of your day. There is no shortage of mini waterfalls and avalanche warnings. You may even notice the remains of a landslide that occurred in 1994. And, okay, there may be a bit of an incline. Oh, uh, help me! <laughs> wow. people. The oh, let's give it a go. You first. Now, back to Rootburn Falls Hut. I was still obsessing over the fact that there were flushing toilets. I had to go in there to film video evidence. The hut has bunk bed style rooms which are separate to the large kitchen and eating area. A short distance away you'll find Rootburn Falls, which are a series of rapids that plunge to the bottom of the valley. The falls total 176 metres in height. Welcome back to this episode of What Not To Do The Day Before A Hike. Yeah. Um, so the evening before leaving, we had to have an early morning flight, I thought I'd mow the lawns and I've got a big lawn and I thought, you know, it's good training for the walk. So I decided to mow the lawn and as I did that, it was getting dark, I didn't see a rock and it kicked up behind the lawnmower and smashed through the gumboot into my leg. It's not a big cut, there's a massive hole, like real deep and it needed two stitches. So that happened the evening of, I got home at 2 a.m. And, uh, and yeah, and I had to leave, I have to get up at five, six o'clock to catch a flight. So. But it's going well, yay. Hiking with stitches. Yeah, bro. and I didn't snitch. I'm fully invested. Oh, another one of my initials. If the next one's M, then it's going to be crazy. Day 2. Rootburn Falls Hut to Lake Mackenzie Campsite. Distance 11.3 kilometres. Time approximately 5 to 6 hours. Today you'll climb steadily up the valley until you reach the highest point on the track, which is Harris Saddle, sitting at 1,255 metres. You'll get some incredible long distance views to edge you on the entire way. So we've just left the Rootburn Falls hut heading towards Lake Mackenzie campsite. Rumour has it that the campsite is a good one, so I'm really excited to see what that's all about. Walking through this valley now, to me, it looks fake. Does it look fake to you?
morning tea time. Otherwise known as eleven seeds. Got our little spot. A semi little lake. Just around the corner, you'll find Harris Saddle Shelter. This is a very popular rest spot for hikers walking in either direction. It is here you can decide whether to summit Conical Hill. Given the appropriate weather, we said yes. Conical Hill is a further 260 metres in elevation. degrees it is an amazing view took about 40 minutes to get up here it is a side track so maybe allow one and a half to two hours their weight down is going to be pretty tricky lots of loose rocks but definitely worth it. once we're off this peak we've got three to four hours that way Lovely. The amount of times we've seen lovely water. And the problem is, like, I'm a swimmer, so normally I'd be in there. But with the stitches, I can't get them wet. So, um, the pain. Sit this one out. Good old foot dip. And I just get hypothermia, so <laughs> best avoid that. Yeah, true. Well, like, two minutes on each foot would be amazing. I think it would probably freeze off, though. be rewarded with your first glimpse of Lake Mackenzie. That's when you'll know it's all downhill from here. The campsite can sleep 18 people and the hut sleeps 50. at the beautiful Lake Mackenzie. The sun's gone down, but it's still an incredible view. Today was a huge day for us on the track. We spent about 10 hours and 35 minutes, according to the Fitbit out there. The track was meant to take about four to five hours, but word around camp is it's a little bit debatable. I think everybody had a big day today. So we're about to tuck in for the night and get a nice sleep ready for day three tomorrow.
good morning. It is day three, the final day on the route zone track. So we've just left Lake Mackenzie campsite. Behind me, you can see a lodge where there would have been for some private orcas, but the view from the campsite is the best view out of the hut, out of the campsite, out of the fancy people. So recommend the campsite if you can do that. So today we're a little bit under the pump. We've got a four hour walk, but we have to reach the divide by three o'clock to reach the bus. So we'll see how we go with that. Day three, Lake Mackenzie campsite to the divide. Distance, 12 kilometers. Time, approximately four to five and a half hours. Despite being the last day, there's no shortage of highlights. You'll be immersed in the forest as you make your way closer to Eland Falls and Lake Howden. in Fiordland National Park. This one here is called Irland Falls. It stands at 174 meters tall and it is taller than any waterfall in the North Island of New Zealand. Pretty epic. I'm not going to do that because I get completely saturated. I was waiting in the middle of the tall Set a trip for Unaware of where my heart would go I was waiting in the undertow In the water feels Like a friend I've not seen in years So familiar and strange and like a lover who lost her touch At first I was hesitant Now it seems I'm so cute Now we can go again, that's good, I'm ready to go How'd I wind up so far from home When I barely had left the shore get to a certain spot and something in the air just feels different? That is Lake Howden. Lake Howden is a turn-off for another popular hike in the area called the Greenstone and Cables. The Greenstone and Rootburn Valleys were once used by the Māori people as they searched for Panami. The first camp that was recorded at Lake Howden was in 1889 by surveyor E. H. Wilmot. Speaking of camps, there used to be a hut here. In February 2020, the hut was hit by a landslide amidst a massive storm. It was too severely damaged to be rebuilt. This storm knocked out a total of 440 kilometers of tracks in the area, which led to a large-scale evacuation. If you look closely, you can still see the remnants of the storm. our time check. It's currently 2.20 p.m. The bus arrives at 3 p.m. It's still going to take one hour to get to the divide. Time to hike like you've never hiked before. 
Dougie Cam, take it from here. Oh, this is the road! I can see the road! Here, yeah, boy! Now, we did come across a wicker on the track. Not an unusual sighting for New Zealand, until we found out that the Department of Conservation had not seen a wicker on the divide side of the trail for many years. So keep your eyes peeled. All right, back to the shuttle. Tell me, how far have we got? Oh, wonderful. Well, how you doing? You right? You right? Good. Good. We just had to gun it back. After three glorious days of sunshine, we made it to the other side. The root burn track, give that a tick. <laughs>